Thermaltake Tough Power GF1 power supply. Let's take a look. 750 watt version, fully modular. Came in this nice large box, has really good foam padding on the inside protecting the power supply itself. Great packaging, no complaints there. Comes with a 10 year warranty, so that should be good assuming they fully support their warranties. Obviously I haven't had to use it because it works. Dimensions of this power supply are 150 millimeters by 86 millimeters by 140 millimeters. In my PC build, there is just barely enough space to fit a fan on the bottom of the case, but uh, it, it's pretty standard in size. This is a fully modular design that means all the cables have to be connected to the power supply and you decide which ones you want to use based on your computer configuration. Did come with a few zip ties and screws. I was using the actual case screws so I didn't need to use the ones that came with the PSU. I can take the two additional cables I'm not using at the moment, put them in this Nice included bag and I'm all good there so I don't lose them. Also has paper instructions, it's always nice to see. There isn't a ton of information, but it does have a bunch of languages on it. Let's go over some of the important specifications. Output capacity of 750 watts, 80 plus gold efficiency rating. However, on the box it says up to 90%. I don't really have any way to test that. I did pull up hardware monitor and look at the voltage ranges for the different rails on this power supply. You can see that they don't change too much, just a slight variance between those 12, 3.3 and 5 volt on the PSU. It'll depend on how much load you put on the PSU, things like that, where that might fluctuate. But yeah, for me, the computer works, so I'm not gonna complain. I tend to go with a power supply that has a good amount more with its rating compared to how much power I'm actually gonna be using. The cooling system is 120 millimeter hydraulic bearing fan with a zero fan mode. I'm not using the zero fan mode because it is just very quiet as it is. But if you do use that zero fan mode, there is a switch on the back from zero to 30% load on the PSU, it won't be running the fan at all. And there is some side ventilation in the PSU. This is a fully modular design and the cables themselves are flat style. Compared to the old traditional PSU cables, it is easier to use. They do have some memory to them. So when you bend the cable, they're kind of sort of going to stay that way. I'm using with a MSI X67E giving plus Wi-Fi motherboard. And on the top with the CPU connectors, I had to bend the CPU power cables quite a bit and they do stay where they need to stay. So they don't interfere with the fan and the thin cables in this case did work well but there are some quirks to it which i'll get to the included cables with this psu you've got your main power connector 24 pin you have the atx 12 volt 4 plus 4 pin serial ata 5 pin connectors pcie 6 plus 2 pin connectors this is over two cables but there are four connectors with that it has four pin molex connectors those are the peripheral type connectors for fans or whatever let's go over some of the negatives of this power supply that i've found so far no 16 pin 12 vh power connector however it's rated 750 watts so it really wouldn't make any sense for this power supply to have that connector type on it considering those are rated up to 600 watts it does have the four six or eight pin PCIe connectors over two cables so you can connect quite a few GPU options to this PSU. In my case I'm using a RTX 4060 it doesn't need a ton of additional power. The CPU power connectors were difficult to orientate and attach to my specific motherboard which is MSI X670E Gaming Plus Wi-Fi but it did work out okay with the cables being thin like they are I was able to also use that memory on the cables a little bit with the fan on the top of the case and getting those two CPU connectors connectors attached it worked but I would have liked some more length to this cable or if they were separated between two CPU power connector cables that would be very nice but it's just one cable overall it is a somewhat limited selection of cables and they have a lot of daisy chaining going on I would have preferred some of this stuff more broken out into different types just so that I wouldn't have to use one long daisy chain for one thing and there is only one specific cable with the four pin Molex connectors. So if you have a ton of those that you need, you're gonna be somewhat limited. However, these days fans can be connected to the motherboard. They can be connected to a fan power controller device. So that was usually the main thing that it would use. Those tend to use SATA connectors now these days. Overall, not too bad. The positives I've found of this PC so far, nice packaging, good foam protecting it in transit or whatever. It is fully modular, so that is the benefit of you don't have to use everything. You're gonna be less stuff in your computer looking cluttered. The cables are fully black. They also have a bit of memory to them. 
like I mentioned, pretty decent. I just wish they were a bit longer in some situations. Comes with an extra bag so you can stow away those cables and keep them all together. My computer has been stable, no issues. I don't really get super detailed into the power and monitoring it and such, but it works, so I'm, I'm not gonna complain. I'm not putting a huge load on this PSU, maybe 300 watts, maybe 350 max. The fan is probably my favorite feature of this PSU. It's very quiet, as is, and then you have that additional quiet mode that'll go from 0 to 30% load if you want the fan completely off. Overall, it's a functional power supply. It just works as you would expect. It has a reasonable amount of connectivity to it. With 750 watts, you can power a decent amount of stuff, but don't expect to be using it with a 5090 or anything like that that's going to use a ton of power. I had quite a few issues making this video because there is an older version of this power supply. It has the same name basically. It's the Thermaltake Tough Power GF1 and mine is the 2024 version. They're both called Premium but they have a 1 versus a P in the model number, model name type thing. It's really confusing because there is actually a lot different between the two power supplies. You can see they have the same name basically but one is called the 2024 version and the difference in the model number you've got a one and a p you'd think okay they're probably pretty similar but not so much they're a physically different size one is 160 millimeters one is 140 millimeters length so this one's going to be harder to fit in cases but there are benefits to the bigger psu and that just that just the size difference you'd think that'd be enough one has a 140 millimeter fan one has a 120 millimeter fan on the Amazon page for this power supply, it actually says 140 millimeters, but it's the one that I got. It's not the older one. So this is blatantly wrong on here. 140 millimeter fan is generally better than 120 millimeters. I didn't know that going in that I was buying one with 120 millimeter fan, but at the very least, they're both the fluid bearing type fans. Also, I don't know if this is the case, but one of them says premium Japanese capacitors. And then the one that I have has high quality main capacitors. So it doesn't give the more specific version of it. Kind of weird. There's also a difference in the layout and amount of connections on the power supply. They're both fully modular, but this one has an additional connection point. So that means the cables are different. Again, don't call the same thing if it's different. The older one mentions a peak output capacity of 900 watts. The newer one does not. The older one mentions strict voltage regulation and I couldn't find anything on the newer one. So is it different? Who knows? You can see there are actual differences in the specifications as well. Don't call it the same name if it's a different thing. 120 watts, 100 watts for the maximum output power on the 3.3 and 5 volt positive. I'm not thrilled that Thermaltake used basically the same name for a different product. It feels like a bait and switch. In my case, I was trying to buy a lot of components at the same time and one of the PSUs that I wanted went out of stock. I was buying it around the Black Friday weekend. This was available. It had the fluid bearing fan. I just didn't look in enough detail to notice that there were differences. I got what I got and it works. I'm not going to try to return it at this point, but know what you're getting. <laughs> and Thermaltake, please don't use the same name for different products. Scammy, not good. Should you consider this power supply? It seems decent. I haven't done any like super detailed tests on it to verify all of the claims and all of the voltages and everything besides hardware monitor. But for my computer, it's been stable. It functions. It does everything that I need. It's quiet. Yeah, it seems okay. Now let's look at the Thermaltake Tough Power GF1 2024 version with the P at the end of the product name. It's got a tech, I suppose, too. 